What's up, my pilots? Vloggy Poncho here. Today is January 28th, 2024. I hope you're having a great day. Some updates from me. Um, I've played so much Minecraft in the past couple weeks that I've had to switch back to using a rollerball mouse. This is what I got back a, phew, 10 years ago when I was a freshman in college and playing so much Minecraft that I got Carpal Tunnel. Of course, at that time, I was playing on my crappy laptop, and I was using a mouse that had your wrist pronated like that. It was like the worst possible uh, situation. So uh, it's not as bad now, but it's still annoying. So I've had to switch. And I was already using an ergonomic mouse like this one where it sits upright so that instead of your hand being flat, you have it rotated, which is more comfortable for a long-term use, sort of a natural, you know, 45 degree angle like that. I've had to switch back to a trackball and I'm getting used to it again. Anyway, I thought that was kind of funny. Minecraft is the one thing that I'm willing to sit and use my mouse for long enough to actually merit <laughs> changing out my hardware. Today was a pretty decent Sunday, and I'm actually going to add a checkbox because I did some work today. I have something i got to present tomorrow, and I didn't really feel like I was ready. I wasn't sure if I had enough time tomorrow, so I worked on it for a couple hours today. And, uh, oh boy, yeah, the meeting might not go well. Basically, my recommendation is going to be that the software we have is going to struggle to complete the requested task in a performant, performative manner, and uh, that never goes over well. So I try and figure out how to explain to the customer, sorry, the product you bought's not good enough. Ugh. That's not exactly it, but that's the simple version. All right, let's do the connections. I don't know why it reintroduces me sometimes like I haven't played before. All right, let's see here. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? I see crest, peak, summit, and vertex can all mean to the top of something. Yeah, let's go with that. Vertex actually has a more general meaning of a uh, point where edges meet. So it doesn't have to be the highest point, but it's often used in that meaning, uh, in that way. So what's next? Number, baby. Hmm. Interesting, interesting. Contact, digits. Look at all this, like, number... Digits. Hmm. I'm not seeing it. Nothing is jumping out at me here. I see bag and pocket storage locations, but none of these really scream storage location. Tiles. Tiles. Things you can line a bathroom with. Oh. Hmm. Wow, no themes are jumping out at me here. This is it's a strange one where we get well, we got the easiest one. And now the other three are all weird. Digits can mean fingers or numbers. It's uh, digits, numbers. Some of these seem to be like board game related, like tiles, boards, cells. Cells can be, cell is one of those words that has like a thousand meanings. It could be a prison cell, a biological cell. It could be a cell as in a space on a spreadsheet or grid. Uh, it's, uh, it's got a lot. So board and cell could be related. Tiles seems like something you'd play with a board. Or play on a board. And again, toy. Mm. Nothing is jumping out at me here. I think cell, phone. No, nothing Nothing else here really seems to go with phone. I guess pocket phone is a, th is a thing. A toy phone could be a thing. But uh, I don't know about that. Contact. Hmm. 
touching, something you put in your eye, a person that you get in, in touch with for information. What a, this is, this is weird. I almost never have trouble with the second group. Let me shuffle these a little and just see, see how I feel about it. Hmm. The digits and number are kind of the same thing. Digits are what we use to write numbers. Tiles, cell, board. Hmm. Okay, what about baby? Something small? Yeah. Yeah, words for words that mean small, like a toy uh, poodle. It's a small poodle. You have like a mini schnauzer. A baby's a small thing. What's the other small pocket? With the other word for things that are small. Okay. That was the, oh, there should be one that's relatively straightforward here. Maybe it has to do with like equipment for playing Scrabble. Yep, <laughs> okay. As I was like, oh, you do get like a little rack in there. Cell contact number digits. I mean, I guess these are all slang for phone number. I mean, I don't know what else they're, they really wanted me to say about that. Can I get your blank? Uh, sure, slang for phone number. All right, weird puzzle. And now I have just a little interesting chart. So check this out. This is an overlay in terms of um, latitude of where European and North American cities would be in like terms of actual distances from each other. So check this out. Look at the North American ones first. Ooh, Jasper's excited about something. There must be a kitten out there. You can see like these European cities that are notably cold, like Reykjavik and Helsinki, are way up in Canada. And even ones that you would think are like more like warmer, like Madrid, it's out here in, with like California, nothing down this far. I mean, if you get down to, to here, you're into Africa, yeah? And it's kind of interesting to me that people don't realize that Europe is so much farther north than North America, or at least so much farther north than the United States is. But this is even more telling to me as someone who knows like where um, American cities are. Like the fact that the distance between uh, Seattle and Anchorage is like far enough to get you out to, to Iceland. Crazy. And then you really see the effect that the geography of the land plays in weather. Like Denver is going to be much colder and much snowier than southern Italy by a, by a long shot because of the effect of being near water, like the Mediterranean Sea here. And then San Francisco probably has similar weather to the south of Spain. I don't know if how, how exactly how close, but again, because they're both coastal, they're, they're similar. And then you look over and Atlanta is equivalent to being in the Middle East. <laughs> again, different geography uh, works out that way but it is interesting to me that the sahara desert is right across from where the desert is in north america over here so that that part at least lines up but where we put our cities is a bit different I mean, imagine miami just being right here next to mecca <laughs> that would be a that would be quite a spring break <laughs> yeah we're gonna go pray and then uh party after or maybe the other order <laughs> I just thought this was really cool. It's just, it's neat to see what, what, uh, most of Europe is across from Canada is the way I usually think about it. It's like, okay, it's like one notch up almost. Anyway, I just thought that was kind of a cool visualization. Hope you guys are having a great day. Good weekend. Get readied up for Monday tomorrow. It's going to be a bad week. It's going to be tough. 
at least for me. Hopefully not for you, but uh, we'll get there. See you tomorrow.